Hi, James with the OneHourSmartHome.com and today we are going to explain your home wiring and what is a neutral. This video is going to be all about what a neutral wire is. So what we've drawn here is an entire electrical diagram for your house all the way back to the electrical grid. I'm going to zoom in now so you can read and see everything really good and you're going to see a little bit less of me. So let me do that here. Okay. What we've got going on here is all the way over at uh, my left, I guess, and on your screen it'll be different however you're looking through the computer. And we've got a diagram here that shows the transformer and utility lines. That's what this black uh, line is here and all these black lines. So what you've got coming in from a utility grid is you've got different phases of power. I'm not going to go into the depth on all of that because you really don't need to know it for home wiring unless you've got like a commercial shop in your house or something like that. But what you've got is three phases of power that come in. But usually when it goes into your house, you have only a single phase that goes into your house, but it goes through a transformer to step it down from higher voltage to lower voltage. And that is the first place that a neutral wire comes into play and why are we are showing you here. So you've got your transformer and utility lines. And when you have your transformer and utility lines coming off the pole, you're going to have three wires coming in. You're going to have 120 volt one leg, 120 volt another leg in pink, and the orange is the other 120 volt leg. And then you've got a neutral wire, which is basically right in the middle of this transformer coil. And that is zero volts when compared to either transformer power leg. So if you compare the neutral wire to the power leg one, you would get 120 volts in the pink. If you compare the neutral to transformer leg two, you'd get 120 volts in the orange. Now, this is all single phase. If you were to compare the orange to pink, you would get 240 volts approximately. And 120 volts is an approximation as well because it does slightly differ throughout the power grid, but we're just gonna use that terminology for this. So what you have coming in is two 120 volt power legs all on the same phase in a neutral wire. That all comes in to your electrical panel. And that's what we've got designated here in this purple, your electrical panel. And this is the main electrical panel for your house that has all the circuit breakers and stuff like that in there. And I've designated one leg here in the orange, and I've designated another leg here in the pink, and I've designated the neutral wire here in the blue wire down here. And how a typical circuit works is that whenever you have a circuit, you're gonna have a circuit breaker that crosses from your neutral wire over to your hot wire, 120 volts. And then you have a 120 volt circuit. Now for higher voltage appliances, such as a uh, oven, maybe a range or a electric dryer, you would have potentially a 240 volt circuit. And that would cross from purple over to orange instead of the neutral wire because you want a hundred and twenty uh, two hundred and forty volts power to your electrical system so we're covering what a neutral wire is we're not going to get into 240 volts other than you know it's there but what you've got coming out then is for your typical neutral wire in your typical 120 volt circuit you're going to have a power or hot wire with 120 volts that's what this orange represents and you're gonna have a neutral wire. And the hot wire or that orange wire is where electrical current in voltage is coming from or being provided from. Think of it as the upstream river or waterfall. It is providing current, it is providing flow. That is voltage and electrical current. The neutral wire, anytime you create an electrical circuit in order for things to work, the neutral wire is the return path for the current. So in order for the river to flow or electricity to flow, it has to have a power source pushing it, you know, which is this 120 volt line. And then it has to have a return path 
for it to go through. So it needs to have some way to get back to the electrical panel, to the transformer, to basically zero volts uh, or, or neutral. And that is what happens. So when electricity comes, we'll just show you, it goes from the transformer utility lines, which is stepped down to 120 volts. It goes through here, it goes into the electrical panel, comes down the electrical panel. And let's say it was in this outlet and you had something plugged in, it would go down this orange wire through your device that you had plugged in here in this outlet, and then back down to the neutral wire that would go back to the electrical panel and to the transformer or that same circuit. Um, it is also grounded, so it is at a zero potential volt energy level, but it goes through that circuit from hot through the device to neutral. Now, what we've got here in this green, that is the ground wire. If you were to open up your electrical panel in your home, you're typically gonna see at the very bottom, unless you have a really old house, you may not see this, but you should. Ground wires uh, are something that is required by code in the majority of areas in the world, and they are a safety thing, and you really wanna have a ground wire and a electrical grounded panel. Um, the ground wire, you'll see a, if you were to open up your electrical panel, you'd see a green bar that was at the bottom, not a green bar, a uh, copper bar usually, or whatever kind of metallic bar down the bottom, and a whole bunch of green wires are connected to it, or unshielded copper wires. In the ground, it is essentially grounded. It is a wire that runs into the ground. Typically, you have a copper rod that runs into the ground. Sometimes it's a pipe. It's connected to uh, interior plumbing and then to a pipe down below that goes into the ground. But that is zero potential energy. It is ground. It is going straight down to the ground. That is why it's called a ground wire. And uh, typically, it's an unshielded copper wire, or they are the green wires uh, going into the panel. And the ground is a method for if a device were to malfunction, it provides a potential potential path for the electrical current to go that has less resistance than a human body so that it will go through the ground wire back to the electrical panel and back down into the ground rather than going through you and shocking you. So that's what the ground wire is. But uh, this, we'll get into kind of everything over here and how this would work. So we showed you a neutral wire basically is the return path for current. And the most common way that an electrical circuit is wired up is you're going to have them for your, you know, like kitchen, living room, dining room, bedrooms, garage. Usually each area of the house has its own circuit or maybe two areas of the house are on one circuit. Depends on how much load that you have within your house. Well, the most common way that it kind of comes in is through an outlet. The very first thing you're going to have is a hot and a neutral wire. And why it comes in, a neutral wire comes in through an outlet or why it's there typically is because most every room that you're gonna have, either by code or for the use of it, you need some kind of a plug to plug things in, like your computer, uh, a lamp, whatever it is, TV. So, most commonly, you're gonna have your hot wire, 120 volts, you're gonna have your neutral wire coming into the outlet because you need to complete a circuit for any device that is plugged in. So one side of the outlet will have the hot wire, the other side will have a neutral wire, and then we've drawn, shown here, um, you know, that third prong, that little prong that you see in a electrical outlet, that is green ground wire, okay? So that's right here. And that's just connected back to the ground panel or the ground bar inside the electrical panel. Now, typically what happens from there because, you know, you've got your outlets to plug things in and out. And if you just had a hot wire and a load wire on both sides, it wouldn't work because you need a way for current to get back to the electrical panel. And if you had a switch downstream, it wouldn't provide a continuous circuit because the switch could be open or closed. And if it is open, even though you had one wired in here like daisy chained, it wouldn't work because if the switch was open, this outlet would no longer have a path for electrical current. So what you have then uh, from typically your light switch, you're gonna have your hot wire, your neutral wire and your ground wire all going to a light switch. And that light switch will then control a light or a series of lights. And we've just done one light here just for the ease of explanation. And 
that will go to a junction box, which is simply a plastic or metal box that the light switch is housed in. If you were to open up the cover on your light switch, you may have seen these boxes. Um, that is where they are and what they're called. And the switch is inside there. So we've just drawn the switch here as open so that uh, the power is not currently on. And what happens is when you close this switch, then the power can flow through the orange again, the hot, but now it is technically called a load wire, 120 volt load wire. Um, they, in electrical terminology, the term load is used for the wire that is connected after a switch that is connected to the load. It's just a designation, um, but it is still technically a hot wire. It has hot, um, it has electrical current going through it. The load wire though, wouldn't have electrical current going through it when the switch is opened. And hence the reason they use the different terminology for load and for hot. Um, so the power goes through the light and then now it goes through the neutral. If you have a newer home, the neutral wire should go through the electrical switch box per code. That's very important. So the neutral wire is here and it will go through. It's not connected to anything in the light switch. It may be wire nutted together to other neutral wires within this circuit, but it is not connected to the actual light switch unless you have a smart switch, in which case sometimes it is connected to the smart switch because smart switches can require a neutral wire to power the Wi-Fi chip continuously even when the light switch is off. So then the power would come back through the neutral, goes back through the neutral, and back through here. It's gonna go back through this path. If there is a current going through this outlet at the time, that current will also go back through this neutral wire path, and it goes back to the electrical panel. So I'm just gonna show you how the typical flow of current would go through a typical electrical system and explain, I guess, again, what a neutral wire is. But the neutral wire is at its basic, most basic level, the return path for current that eventually gets to zero volts, right? There may be a little bit of voltage going through it uh, when you've got a light switch on, you've gotta have current and flow because it's going back here, but it is the return path for current electrons through the system that eventually gets to zero because it is grounded. And that is how you have flow or pressure through an electrical system. So starting all the way back at the utility, um, you would have power coming like this through 120 volts, just like so. Follow this dotted line, it goes through the electrical panel from the electrical panel, it goes down to the outlet. And at this time, if we had something plugged into this outlet, let's say we had a fan plugged in here, electrical current would go through the fan that's plugged into the outlet, turning the fan, spinning the blades, and it would go cross over through the fan, and it would go out the neutral wire, okay? And it goes back up the neutral wire, electrical panel, and it's going to go neutral wire all the way to the transformer or down the, oops, not that ground. It will go back down the ground, but it'll go down the grounded rod like so. So let's say we had the light switch turned on. We close the switch. How would electrical wire, uh, electrical current go? It would go just like this, 120 volts down this leg, follow the black dots. Okay, and this time it's gonna continue through the hot 120 volt leg down this way. And we're gonna say this switch gets closed. You've got electrical current following the black dots. Okay. And the electrical current now is going through the load wire, which is technically also considered a hot wire, but 
the terminology is not so. It goes through the light switch and is illuminating the room. And now that electrical current needs a path to go back to where it came from or down to zero, okay? So it goes down the neutral wire like so, follows the neutral wire and continues on down to this outlet. It's not going through the outlet, but it's connected to it. Goes back here, follows this neutral wire, back into the electrical panel, back to the transformer neutral, and back down to zero to ground at zero resistance or at zero potential energy. And that is what a neutral wire is. So a neutral wire is the return current path for electrical current, which is zero volts, zero volts. You may have voltage here when it's coming back because there's a little bit of resistance in the wire. It came through here. There is flow through the neutral wire when there is electrification of a light bulb. But ultimately, the neutral wire goes to ground or goes to zero volts, right? So it won't have energy through it if there is no light switch is on and if there is nothing plugged into an outlet, you would technically have a neutral wire that is at zero volts. But once you've got uh, some lights on or you've got something plugged in, because it is the return path for current, there is gonna be a little bit of uh, amperage, a little bit of voltage on there as it does make its path back to ground, back to uh, zero volts. So we hope that that explained to you what a neutral wire is and a little bit more about your home wiring system and how it works. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.